Right, I'm going to open up the Quran TM file by double clicking it. Here it's loading. It takes a bit of time because the file is pretty big at 2 megabytes. So I'm just going to pause the video while that's happening. Right, so um, here's the file. Basically, it's an Excel spreadsheet. It's a right to left spreadsheet, so the column numbers, the column lettering goes from the right. So the first column is A, B, C, D, E, F. There are six columns, and every word in the Quran, and a word is defined as any text which is separated from the next word by a space um, is placed in a separate cell. So for example the very first word of Surah Al-Fatiha if we take it uh, if we understand Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim to be the first ayah would be Bismi and then the second uh, word is Allah and so it would be in a cell on its own and then ar-Rahman and then ar-Rahim so Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim will have four words. Bismil, Bismi, Allah, ar-Rahman, ar-Rahim. Each, and, and so this continues as the ayahs go down, and each ayah ends with this cell, which has the surah number, a space, a colon, space, and then a ayah number. So if you're going to search for a surah by using the Excel find functions, remember to add that space if you're searching for something. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to press Control F to bring up the find dialog. And I'm going to go to the 22nd surah, space, let's say, the 19th ayah. So I think that's Surah Al-Hajj. Let's have a look. So if I press Find Next, it'll take me straight away there. Okay? And the 19th ayah precedes the numbering. So if I go work my way up, we can go right to the top there to see what surah is, surah number 22. So 3, 2, 1, there it is, Surah Al-Hajj. Some of the uh, row sizes are not uh, uh, perfectly aligned, so you might need to actually increase the size of the row, uh, which you should be able to do by just clicking on a cell and then just adjusting the size, which for some reason I can't do here, but th it should be possible. Anyway, so that's how it is. So let me just go back up to the top again. So this is the entire Qur'an, if I go right down to the bottom. Um, let's go back up a bit. Well, actually, I'll just search for 114. 114, space 1, Surah An-Nas. There it is, Surah An-Nas. And if we come right down to the bottom, there's the final word, An-Nas. And that's row 28,253. And... Uh, the reason this has been set to six rows, to sorry, six columns, is because it's pretty uh, easy if you need to print out something. Right, going back up to the top. <coughs> so, below every odd numbered row, so all the odd rows have the Arabic text, row one, row three, row five, and every even row, the one below the Arabic text, has the meaning, the contextual meaning, and then in square brackets, it has the word root and then the three root letters that make up the word. If there is no root letter, so for example here, let me just zoom in on that. So remember, you can always tell where you are by looking at the column that's highlighted and the row that's highlighted. So this is B4. So we call each one of these squares a cell. So this is cell B4. And as you can see, it has the word Allah and has off in brackets because this is an idafa between the word ism and Allah, Bismillah, in the name of Allah. And, but the word Allah, uh, depending on uh, uh, how you understand this, uh, some of the ulama uh, take this to be a word that exists on its own without any real uh, root, hence it's got three dashes. The data from here has been taken from the corpus.quran website, uh, which has all the Quranic words uh, on their own and this is also the corpus data with just the roots extracted and put here. So um, there may be some errors with the roots and there may be some errors with the meanings uh, because corpus is still a project that is ongoing and uh, but uh, the vast majority of errors there are to do with i'rab 
uh, which hasn't been included here, and there are unlikely to be uh, any, many, if any, errors in the translation and the roots. But unlike all human works, it's something is possible. Um, <clears throat> the text for the Corpus Arabic has been taken from, uh, if you read the website, it says it's been taken from tanzil.net, uh, and uh, you can even download that yourself. Um, and to date, no errors have been reported apart from the very initial type of, I think there were some orthographical points. It's just important to note that the Arabic text, the font is important. So if I go to home, it'll just show you what the, I'm using Arabic typesetting. Um, there is an odd occasion where this font doesn't work and you have to change it. You have to switch the font to one of the fonts that are provided on the Tanzil dot website. And one of the fonts is the PDS Salim Quran font. And uh, there is another font which uh, uh, I think it's called uh, Quran something. Let's have a look if I can see it. Um, let's see. It's Uthmani. No, it's not Uthmani. It's called something. I can't. Re it's not coming to my mind at the moment. But for for the moment, you can just use that font there, and it works pretty well. Um, remember, this is a study tool or a study aid. It's not designed to replace the uh, printed text, but it's actually very useful, inshallah. Um, the, the, the spreadsheet is protected, so if I try and change the letters, it, uh, I've tried to type something, it says the cell or chart that you're trying to change is protected and therefore read-only. Um, you can change something, and that's the, the, the formatting, but you can't change the actual text, uh, at least if you don't try and hack into it. And so there's an element, it's, this is really to prevent any mistakes coming as you're reading the, 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 the passage. So let's carry on. So what's so special about this, uh, uh, the each word is on its own, so that's the first thing. The second thing is whenever a word is repeated, especially when the combination of the Arabic and the translation is repeated, then instead of putting the translation below, it actually redirects you to where, the origin, the, where this word occurred. So for the word Ar-Rahim, it's a CD3. So if I click on that, it takes me to D3, and you can see the black highlighting turns up on that cell. And this is the same word, Ar-Rahim. And it has exactly the same meaning as this Ar-Rahim. So here it means the most merciful and those are the root words. So if we go a bit further down, you find that as you, as you, as you read the Qur'an further and further and further down, so I'm going to go sort of fairly down here, you will come to ayat, well let's go really right down here, something like there. Oh, that was quite pretty good. Here, so if we take this... <coughs> Uh, here, one, two, three, four, a four-word ayah, and only one of the words is unknown. We've never met this word before. And here it says, inna, and it redirects us to C421. So if I click on that, it will take me back up to C421, and indeed. Okay, and that's what it means. And then I can use the back key, the back arrow, to take me back to where I was. Now, when you start Excel you don't actually have these backward and forward uh, buttons up here. You've actually got to install them. So I'm just going to show you how you do this in Excel 2007. You click here and you can customize the, uh, you can customize the, the ribbon. So you right click on the ribbon. There, customize quick access toolbar. That's what it's called, quick access toolbar. So you click that and then you change this from popular commands to all commands and then you scroll down until you see back and they're alphabetically ordered so the back key is called back so there it is to add it you just double click and it'll go there or you can use this add button here so let me just remove it from here for a second so now these are all the uh, keys that are on the quick access toolbar the command sorry and if I click on the word back on the left hand side and then I click add, it turns up there. Let me remove the forward because I don't want it on the left hand side of the back. And so I'm going to scroll down to forward now. So if I go all the way down to F, forward, there's forward. And I click add, it turns up there. And then I press OK and you will see these keys. So that's pretty handy when you're navigating with the hyperlinks in the Excel spreadsheet. So, A'udhu Billahi Shaitan Rajeem, Wa Inna Yunusa. Liman, Liman, and 
لمن لمن لا من المرسلين sorry لا من المرسلين indeed Yunus was and what does this mean لا من I so I think about it but that this is telling me that I've met the word before in there so let me go back to there so in Ilyas لا من المرسلين oh so it's almost exactly the same thing just the word Ilyas has been replaced so لا من is was surely it doesn't give you the breakdown, so lam is lam ta'kid and min is a harf jar from. So I need to go back to where I was reading. I go back there and there's a, the highlighted cell and I can carry on reading from there. Lam min al mursaleen. So the aim of this is as you read the Quran from the beginning to the end, every time you come across a word that you already met, you can actually, rather than trying to remember what the word is uh, or, or reread the meaning, you go back to where the word was originally and you can remind yourself of the first time you actually met the word. It's a translation memory. So the first time you translate it, that's the memory. So that's basically what uh, the Excel spreadsheet does. And, but in addition to that, what you can do, uh, you can utilize a, um, a flashcard Excel sheet, which I'm going to do now. So we, I'll go, if you go right to the top, you see this record vocab button. So let's say I was, I, was a bra I was a very new reader to the Qur'an. I was reading the Qur'an and saying, Bismillah. And I wanted to memorize that Bismi means in the name of. So I highlight the cell. I right click. And I choose the yellow highlight button. And it highlights that. And then let's say I didn't know what Alameen meant. al alamin. So I click on the cell. Right click. And then I click on the, the yellow highlight button. And it highlights it. Once I've highlighted my words, if I come across a word that I suppose I didn't remember Ar-Rahim was that, let me go back to where I first met the word and see if I had highlighted it there. My advice is to always highlight the word the first time you meet it. So let's say we highlight it there. Once I've highlighted three words, I can actually save this uh, spreadsheet and it'll save it with those highlights. So if I shut this and I open it again, I'll just pause it while it's opening. So you can see that basically um, the, the, the highlighting remain. They don't, they're not lost as, lo as long as I save the spreadsheet. Once I'm happy I've highlighted the words that I want to memorize and it has to be in the yellow color, I can click record vocab. But sometimes you may find that your macros are not activated. Uh, so what you need to do is you need to activate your macros. In 2010 when the spreadsheet loads up, it'll ask you do you want to enable macros. Um, this is how you enable macros in 2007. You click on the button up here. You go to Excel options and then you go to Trust Center on the left there. And then you go to Trust Center settings. You click on that and then you go to macro settings. It's a bit buried inside and I've got it on enable all macros. Um, so it's, it says potentially dangerous if you, if you if somebody sends you a file that you don't know who they are, or you don't know the source, then obviously they can they can wreck a bit of havoc. But uh, inshallah, uh, as at least this version, if you get it from a friend or somebody you know, uh, it won't have anything like that. So now, if I click on record vocab, it should whir away and uh, sort of give you the hourglass or its equivalent, and then stop. And it doesn't really say much because it's not very complicated. All it's doing is taking these words and putting them in the vocab file which is in the same directory. So if we look back here, uh, where's this gone? Here. So it's taking those words from this worksheet and it's putting them into this spreadsheet here, which I will deal with now uh, on how to use in, in the next video. So, but that's basically it. Um, if you want to print this, you can print it and you've got to print it with the uh, column numbers and letters and the advantage of that is you can print it out and you can actually refer to these cells uh, from the printed sheets of paper. The only problem is obviously because of the way it's designed so that it's easy to read um, it takes about probably 10,000 uh, pages. So if I, you know, if you go to print and print, uh, I won't print it here but I, I can print it to a sort of a, a PDF file. Uh, just go to prop, uh, sorry, preview and make sure that the thing is printing the cell and row numbers okay so if you look down here it's 9421 pages so probably not a good idea to print the whole thing uh, but if you did then uh, even from the printed version 
you will be able to work out uh, where to go uh, if you are reading the um, the Quran this way. Um, right, so that comes to the end of this. Uh, thank you very much. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.